Welcome back to Wheat Beat. My name is Mike and today, today is the day that we finally hang that hood in my bakery. Hopefully. So the day has finally arrived. My giant bakery hood is supposed to be installed today. In case you need to catch up, I am building a bakery right inside my own home and you should click the link up above if you want to get caught up on this series. In the meantime, fasten your seatbelts because today is going to be an adventurous episode. Now last time we figured out that no, unfortunately the hood is not going to fit through the doorway as is. I'm going to have to make some modifications and you should really go back and see at least part 9 of my series the, with the link up above if you want to get caught up on how we made that determination. But suffice it to say it is not going to fit and what I did figure out I need to do is cut a hole above the doorway and then tip the whole hood on its side and I should be able to slide it in. Well, we're going to do that next but before then I have to go to the a hardware store and figure out how I'm going to hang this hood. Assuming I can get it inside and everything works out the way I expect. So I went to the hardware store and obviously before I did that I looked online and started researching how are you supposed to install a commercial hood anyway. Well it turns out that in most cases what you do is get this special uh, long rod that is threaded. It's called a threaded rod amazingly and you, you put that through the mounting points of the hood and you mount it with some bolts and washers and then you you place the whole hood up into your support system and somebody up above will also use washers and bolts to secure it in place. Now you can also integrate this thing called a turn buckle which is basically what you see here in the diagram uh, up there and you can turn this thing and then you can adjust the height on all four points to level the hood a little bit better. So the threaded rod idea is probably the right way to do it but as I've mentioned several times during the series I've made the mistake of going with residential contractors for a commercial job and that was really a mistake because these people are not really properly equipped to do things the way that they're supposed to be done in a commercial setting. So for example when you're installing this hood you really have some sort of a lift system that holds the hood that holds the hood exactly in the right position while somebody below and somebody above makes all of the proper connections. But I'm just using sheer muscle with a bunch of guys that are going to come help me lift this. So anyhow, my crew could probably build some sort of a makeshift jerry rig type of uh, thing in order to hold it in place. But because the responsibility of the installation of this hood is all on my shoulders, I really need to have some sort of a backup plan uh, in case the threaded rod idea doesn't work. So I'm going to go to the uh, hardware store and see what's out there. And before I go to the hardware store, I'm going to take a, a close look at the connection points on the hood. Here I am looking at it and taking some measurements so I know precisely what the maximum size bolt is or threaded rod I can fit through there. And here I've taken the measurement to the hardware store and sort of confirmed with uh, there what size bolt I can actually fit through that hole. Now one idea is to simply buy four 36 inch threaded rods as my original plan was or the, probably the proper way to install this uh, is and, um, and then install them with the washers and bolts. But a backup idea that I came up with while looking around in the hardware section is to actually use these rods that have loops on the end of them and then threading on the other side. Now the idea here is that I would mount this looped end rod, I'll call it, onto the ceiling using the bolts and washers and you do all that in the ceiling while there's no weight on there and the stress level is relatively low. Now what you then do is buy a hooked end rod for the other side and I would mount that directly to the hood itself. Again, low stress, I can torque it down, I can do everything that I want to while, every, while the whole thing is on the ground. And then the idea is to get everyone to lift up this hood all at the same time, bring it over to the uh, proper position and we should be able to, to basically hook the hood onto those loops that are mounted to the ceiling. That would be the idea. Now I don't know that this is the best way to do it. I just kind of felt like when I was at the hardware store like this would be probably a lower stress method of doing the same thing. It may be a little bit uh, a, a bit of a workaround but I want to have a backup plan because tomorrow morning if this threaded rod idea is not working uh, I don't want to just 
be sunk basically at that point. So I wanted, this is my backup plan. So I went ahead and bought everything and tomorrow the rubber meets the road. All right, I've made it back to the job site this morning and if I'm sounding a little bit tired and not very chipper, it's because uh, it's really early. I don't understand how these guys can start so early. But anyhow, here we are and uh, we'll go ahead and get going with what we planned yesterday. Okay, so first things first, they're gonna cut the framing over the door just like I specified uh, yesterday. And then hopefully once that framing is gone, they'll be able to tip the whole hood on its side and they'll be able to slide that thing right in, hopefully. So here they are taking a reciprocating saw to the framing to cut it away. Done. Okay, now we get the hood into the house. Okay, now that it's in the house, they have to drag the hood into an area where the ceilings are very high because if they try to tip this thing up somewhere else, it's going to hit the ceiling. So here they are taking it to the high point area or an area where the ceilings are very high. Now they're going to tip it up on its side. Now that it's on its side, they can carry the whole thing back towards the bakery where the ceiling is lower and where they couldn't have done the same thing. And here we go. Sorry, the video is a little bit dark, but they're managing to slide it in and things are actually going really well. Voila, it's inside. Now they're orienting it a little more inside the room so it's gonna be a little easier hanging it. So we all stood around in the room and looked at the different options with the threaded rods and the hook and loop idea. And ultimately everybody in the room agreed that the idea with the loop and the hook was gonna be the most straight, straightforward for everybody involved and that's what we ended up pursuing. So the first step was to actually find the precise location of where the looped end rods, that's just what I'm gonna call them, where the looped end rods were going to go. So here they are using a laser to find the precise locations and drill holes into the ceiling and start positioning things in the right place. Now, while they're figuring that out, I went ahead and started mounting the hooked end rods to the mounting points of the hood and here you can see I've used some washers and bolts and I also added some thread lock. Uh, Loctite, I believe, is the brand name of this and it helps prevent loosening over time of those bolts. Now, the guys also went up into the uh, attic space to see what the situation was and sure enough, where they made those holes for the, where the uh, mounting positions need to be, there aren't any studs there. So what they ended up doing was taking some two by fours cutting holes in the two by fours and then placing them into the exact location above the trusses in the attic space so that when they uh, put the threaded uh, rod with the looped end up into there, they'll, it will be in the precise location. Meanwhile, it was time to close up that big hole we made to allow the hood inside. And there it is, completed and ready for the drywall to go back on. And now we're back to the hood hanging part and it looks like they finished mounting everything to the ceiling. And off they go. Now, yes, I'm behind them being a backseat driver telling them where to go. Well, also I have sort of a vantage point that they didn't have because they were below the hood and I could see where they needed to go in order to get it into the looped end 
uh, robbed. Anyhow, it took a while, but success. And then it was picture time. Now I'm talking to them about uh, moving the floor sink uh, from the middle of the room uh, to a little bit more on the right so it makes more sense with the sizing of the two ovens that are gonna go there. I talked about that also in my last video but now I'm explaining it to them. These guys are so awesome. They just looked at it and said, sure, no problem. Anyhow, here's another look at that hood hung into position. A thing of beauty. Here it is from the outside looking into the bakery. Now I can see that the depth of the hood, uh, what I specified from Hood Mart was exactly right because it comes right up to the doorway and once they put the casing around this doorway, it's going to be flush with it and it's going to be perfect. Thankfully that actually worked out because they got the hood nice and tight with the back wall. They, there's not a lot of space back there and so this measurement ended up working perfectly for me. Now I'm going to go up into the attic and see how the connection points look. And there they are. Uh, they've put this rod into the two by four, like I said, with the washer and the bolt. There's a bolt up above and there's also a bolt underneath. And again, the, what you see that looks a little bit blue, that's the thread lock there. It's hard to see, but there's one more connection point over there. And one over there. And, and there's the last one over there. I am super, super excited about this because this went very well. Anyhow, here's just a quick video showing you how they closed up the floor sinkhole and made a new one a little further from the wall and closer to where the convection oven is going to go. And I'm really happy about that too. Okay, next I'm going to put the drywall back up and here it is. Okay, so we did it. We have our hood up on top there. I can't believe it went as smoothly as it did. I'm actually really happy about that. And uh, I went ahead and replaced the, uh, the drywall like I had expected up there. And now I had just uh, taped it and put some uh, mud on top of that. And now we're gonna wait for it to dry. I'll sand it, I'll texture it, I'll finish all of that and then paint it. And then everything will be back the way it was before we even attempted this. But as you can see behind me, I now have my glorious hood in my baking kitchen and uh, it actually came out better than I thought it was uh, going to. Uh, it fits just perfectly. I have a little bit of buffer on each side. It's flat against the back, uh, but overall we have a really good height. Uh, we have access up above there for HVAC and electrical to get in and do their work. Um, and then we fix the wall over there as you can see. Um, so I couldn't be happier. And here I am a few days later, now they're doing the door casing. Check it out. Now that they've added this door casing, I can be certain that I specified the perfect depth for the hood because that maximizes the depth of the hood itself while not infringing on that uh, doorway space. So it's not sticking into the door itself. Well, a lot of progress has been made so far, no doubt, but we're not done yet. There's still the matter of connecting the hood to the duct and then out to the roof curb and fan itself. And just a little preview, I'm not going to be able to show you that in this video or it's just going to get too long again. So I'm going to make that my next video. So a little preview here, nobody wants to touch it. Nobody wants to make the connection of the duct to the hood and the duct to the roof curb and the fan itself. It's just going to be another one of those challenges I'm going to have to overcome. So how do I go about it? You'll have to come back and see that next video. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button because that way I know that you're enjoying the videos that I'm making and I'm giving you stuff that's interesting. So do it, please. And until then, go bake something.